Hey everyone! In this video, we'll look at how to create your own Flipper Zero application. It's just a simple application that displays Hello World and lets you use the D-pad to move a cursor around on the screen. Viewport supports both vertical and horizontal layout, or even a flipped layout. If your development environment isn't already set up, please see my setup videos or my wiki with written instructions. For this video, we'll be using a viewport. Many Flipper Zero applications use a viewport for drawing on the Flipper screen and handling D-pad input. We'll start with the basic example, and then we'll look at a more complex example that follows best practices when using viewport. Let's get started. In this video, you'll need to also clone the Flipper Zero tutorials. If you haven't already cloned them, you can watch this video walkthrough for directions. I've opened our firmware in Visual Studio Code. Next, we'll open the Applications User folder, then open File Explorer, and navigate into your Tutorials folder, then open the UI folder, and then we'll drag viewport underscore demo into applications underscore user in Visual Studio Code. A copy of all of our files should now be found in Visual Studio Code. We'll open the application.fam file and we'll change the entry point from timer to minimal. This entry point is defined in the demo underscore minimal.c file, which we'll look at in a moment. The app ID is your application's ID, and it should be lowercase letters and underscores, and should be unique. FAP category is the folder for the application. Name sets the display name for the application. And icon sets the icon for the application. And again, entry point is the name of the function to run to start the application. App type should be set to external for applications you're writing. Details for all the parameters can be found in the app manifest documentation. Next, let's open demo underscore minimal.c. Again, this file is intended to teach core concepts. It does not follow best practices. We'll look at those best practices later in the video. Multi-line comments start with slash star and end with star slash. Pound include defines the different functions and types we can use in our application. The static keyword in C means that the variable or function is only visible in the current file. We define two integer values, x and y, for the location where we'll draw the cursor. We initialize those values to 32 across and 48 down. We'll look at the myDrawCallback function a little later. And for now, we'll also skip the myInputCallback. This is that entry point name that we defined in our application.fam file. So this is the function that runs when we start the application. We allocate a message queue. These will be input events, like the up key was pressed, and our queue can hold up to eight messages. We store our queue in a variable named queue, which we'll look at more a little bit later in the video. Next, we allocate a viewport, which we store in the viewport variable. We set our viewport's draw function, passing our viewport variable, the name of our draw function, which we named my draw callback, and then we specify null, which means without value, as our draw function's context. So every time our viewport wants to draw, it will call my draw callback, passing it null for that context. So here's that my draw callback function. That first parameter is our canvas we can draw on. And that second parameter is the context we asked for, which will be null. In this example, we're not using that context, so we mark it as unused. Next, we set our canvas's font to font primary, which is the large font. 
And then we draw the string hello world, five pixels in from the left side of the screen and 30 pixels down from the top of the screen. Next, we draw the cursor symbol, X pixels from the left and Y pixels from the top. Remember, X is currently 32 and Y is currently 48. See my wiki for more details on the various canvas drawing functions. Next, we set our viewport's input callback. We pass in our viewport variable, the name of our input callback function, my input callback. The context that we want passed is our message queue. So here's that my input callback function. The first parameter is an input event, which tells us the type of event and the key. And our second parameter is that context, which is our message queue. We create a queue variable based on our context. We check to see if the event type is input type short. The two vertical bars means or. The event type is a repeat. Repeat happens when a button is held down and short happens when a button is quickly pressed and released. If either of those cases is true, we'll do the code between the curly braces. If the key was the left button, we'll decrement x by one. If the key was the right button, we'll increment x by one. If the key was the up button, we'll decrement y by one. And if the key was the down button, we'll increment y by one. And then we'll put our event into the message queue. You'll recall our message queue held eight input events. So if you've already put eight events in, we'll wait forever until somebody takes an event out of the queue. Next, we call viewport set orientation. We pass in our viewport variable, and then we pass viewport orientation vertical for that up and down orientation. We get a copy of the graphical user interface using furry record open, passing record GUI. And we store that in the GUI variable. And then we add our viewport to the graphical user interface, and we specify that we want that to take up the full screen. Your dolphin's mood is based on how you interact with different apps. Here we're specifying game start, but there's also things like game win. Next, we declare a variable for storing input events. Then we define running, which is a Boolean, true or false, and we set its value to true. While running is set to true, we'll keep doing the code inside these curly braces. We call furry message queue get to get a message out of the queue. The first parameter is our queue. The next parameter is ampersand event so it can store the result in the event variable. And then we have furry wait forever. So this function will just keep waiting until we finally use that put to put something into the queue. This function returns a status and we make sure that that status is status okay. If the event was a short back button, then we set running defaults. Next, we call viewport update passing our viewport and this will cause our viewport to end up calling our my draw callback. We're at that closing curly brace, so we'll jump back up to the top of that while loop, and then we'll keep repeating the process as long as running is still true. And again, remember when the user presses the back button, we'll set running defaults. Our application is exiting, so we call viewport enabled set with a value of false, which will disable the viewport. Then we free our message queue. We remove our viewport from the graphical user interface. We free our viewport and we close our GUI record. We return zero to indicate normal application exit. So that we can tell the new version is running, I'll change X to be a value of one and I'll add an exclamation mark to the end of hello world. We'll go to terminal and then run task and then choose launch app on flipper. Make sure QFlipper is not running and that your flipper zero is plugged in.
With our rotated viewport, what's typically the right arrow is now the down button. Next, let's take a look at best practices, which is in our demo.c file. And if we scroll down, we can see the name of our entry point is viewport demo app. So over on our application.fam, we'll edit our entry point to be viewport demo app and then save the application fam. So let's go ahead and look at some of those best practices. The first best practice is to create a structure that holds all of our application data. This will allow us to pass that application data to our draw callback. The next best practice is to add a mutex, which is a mutually exclusive lock. So every time we go to access our state, we'll acquire the lock. And then once we own that lock, we know the state's not changing. Then we'll access those X and Y variables and release the lock. We've also defined X and Y as unsigned integers, 32 bits in size. In our main application, we use memory alloc, malloc, passing it the size of our application state structure. We use furry mutex alloc to allocate our mutex, and then we initialize our application's state variables. When we register our draw callback, we pass our application state instead of null. Another best practice is our input callback just queues a message back with our event. Since our message queue is just input events, we're able to pass that input event directly. We update our main application loop to have all of the logic. Furry message queue get sets our event variable, and then we acquire our mutex. If our draw function is currently drawing, we'll wait for it to release the mutex, and then we'll handle the different key events, updating our state as appropriate. If the back key is pressed, we'll set keep processing to false. Now that we're done modifying our state, we'll release our mutex. And then we'll call viewport update to cause a redraw event. On application exit, don't forget to free that mutex and also to free the application state. Now you have a better understanding of how to use viewport to create Flipper Zero UI applications. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or contact me on Discord.